Uh, but it's an absolute pleasure for me to introduce you all today to the esteemed Dr. Ramzi. Uh, this is honestly my, my favorite part of, of the lecture just because uh, introducing you gives me an opportunity to think back onto so many wonderful memories that we've shared together. It's been an absolute pleasure and honor to be able to work with, with Dr. Ramzi uh, both this year and, and last year and for us to be able to, to really benefit from his knowledge. He's won the Stanford Dean's Award for Excellence in Teaching in the 2003-2004 year, as well as the ASSU Teacher of the Year Award in 2009, and the Knight Favorite Professor Award in 2013. I can tell you all of these awards were well-deserved. Um, just, you know, having, having come to so many of, of Dr. Salty's classes, it's just always a pleasure um, to, to benefit from your knowledge. So in addition to his excellence in teaching, he's also published numerous articles, as well as the collection of short stories titled The Native Informant, and other stories, which received really high praise. Dr. Salty also hosts the very well-known radio show, Arabology, which airs on KZSU 90.1 FM in the San Francisco Bay Area. You can hear it online. We shared that link with you. Um, and I know that, that after the lecture today, everyone will be going out and, and trying to download past episodes. Uh, Dr. Ramsey, through his, his show, Arabology, has truly interviewed all of the major musicians in the Arab world today. Um, you know, anyone that you can imagine, Dr. Ramzi knows them. Um, and, and so it's really just an honor for us to be able to, to hear his thoughts and, and get to, to know more about Lebanon. Now, this is a topic that is, is really hard for, for so many right now. And so it's especially, uh, you know, an honor for us to, to be able to, to hear your thoughts um, you know, while, while the topic is, uh, is so fresh. So please join me in, in thanking Dr. Ramzi um, for joining us tonight. I know that we're all really, really looking forward to, to your lecture. Shukran ya Katie. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Uh, those of you who know me know that, oh my God, my mom just joined from Jordan. I don't know if she can see us, but my mom is joined through, my 80 year old mother has joined us through the phone all the way from Jordan. If this is not an indication of how blessed I am to have such amazing family in Jordan, I don't know what is. Uh, anyway, she will watch the recording, I'm sure, and see herself, but there she is, Habibti. Um, anyway, those who know me know that I try to always put a positive spin on things. I try to have my Arabology show be all about music and culture and not sort of about politics. One, because I don't live in Lebanon, although I was born and raised there. And number two, because I always feel that there is such an amazing array of talent in terms of music um, in the indie and alternative music scene in Lebanon and in the Arab world. And my whole show, Arabology, is, not, is, is all about celebrating those talents, these fiercely independent um, Arab singers, musicians who are uh, mixing genres, who have powerful messages in their songs. They're not, you know, I have a lot of respect for commercial Arabic music like Amr Diab and Nancy Ajram, but that is not the focus of my show or my uh, work. It's really to celebrate those um, deserving indie and alternative Arab musicians from all over the Arab world, because I think their music is really revolutionary. And you, as we are gonna see today, the music is also sort of prophetic because I chose little samples from these, um, uh, from songs that almost, almost, predict some of the disasters that happened in Lebanon. And I'm thinking while a lot of commercial Arab artists were singing about, you know, love and jealousy and, you know, that kind of hishik bishik uh, music, which has a place, you know, in our lives, these indie musicians were talking about government um, corruption, democracy, freedom, women's rights, all this stuff way before anything happened. And some of them went us, you know, were, were criticized the government and got into trouble for it. So when uh, Sijal asked me this year to give the talk, one, I wanted to give the talk in English. I'm not really used to giving talks in English 
Spanish at Cigel. I think Dwight hasn't heard me speak uh, English all semester, but uh, I am uh, going to do it in English because we have a lot of people coming in who are interested in Lebanon and who may not speak Arabic. And so, um, you know, we're going to stick to English today. The songs, of course, will be in Arabic, but I've tried to translate uh, the a few lines for you. So if you don't speak Arabic or aren't familiar maybe with the Lebanese dialect, then you can easily uh, follow along. So I'm going to uh, to share my screen in order to begin my uh, presentation. I can't uh, keep track of the chat. This is where Katie Whiting from I've Sijal got, uh, got my uh, vahir, got my back, and she will be keeping an eye on the chat if you want to type any reactions. At the end, when, I, when, I, when I'm done, I'll be able to see all the chat and respond to any questions. Katie, if you get any comment that is very timely or needs to be addressed, just interrupt me while I'm, uh, while I'm lecturing. Of course, no problem at all. Shukrania binti. And so, uh, and also, you know, I guess when we're playing the actual clips, and they're not going to be long, um, you know, you make sure you've muted yourselves and make sure you close your eyes and just let the music, well, you don't have to close your eyes, but let the, let the music uh, attempt to heal us from what is going on. Again, uh, you know, I have been listening to these amazing indie musicians whom you see in the graphic. Not stop since hearing about Lebanon. It's not like it's made the pain go away, but it's almost made me believe again in this new generation and how different they are than my generation. I was born and raised in Lebanon in the 60s and 70s. It was a different Lebanon than the one we have now. Of course, the lady in the center needs no introduction. That is Feirouz. And uh, she would, you know, warrant a presentation on her own. But I did want to put her there in the center, sort of she's the maternal figure. She's the symbol of Lebanon. She's the mother of these musicians. I think every indie musician you see in the graphic has at some point spoken about how Feirouz has influenced their career. And so, uh, you know, I like how uh, artist Tamir al Ahmad put her in the middle. And this artwork and the whole presentation, uh, this art is by a Jordanian artist whose name is Tamir Al Ahmar. And uh, if you don't know him, you should check out his work on Instagram and Facebook. He's one of Jordan's most amazing digital artists. And uh, also, uh, I think through the next week, and we'll talk about this at the end, uh, he's also giving proceeds of sales of all his digital work through Society6 and Redbubble. Um, to Lebanon. And so um, thank you, Katie, again, for the beautiful introduction and for uh, involving me with Sijal despite the distance between us this year. And uh, looking at the graphics, guys, from, um, uh, from right to left, the lady in, uh, on the right with the hat, that is Tanya Saleh. Hopefully you will enjoy her music. The gentleman on her left is Mike Massey. We've got Feirouz in the middle, and behind her, that is the lead singer from the Lebanese group Mashrua Leila. His name is Hamid Sinno, and he literally rocks the Middle East, although he is living in New York at this moment. To the left of Feirouz is Zaid Hamdan, really a musical genius singer, songwriter, producer. And to the left of him is Yasmin Hamdan. Yeah, same last name, but they're not related. And uh, she is also um, an amazing indie um, musician. And so I'm going to begin by talking about um, Lubnan and the image of Lebanon that we used to see and until August 4th was the image that at least was in my mind, despite Corona, despite a huge economic crisis, despite corruption, despite all of that, we had this beautiful image of Beirut by the Mediterranean. You can see uh, in one of the pictures here, you know, a mosque next to a church in the same street. That to me is a beautiful image. You know, where I think we've been talking about coexistence for many, many decades in Lebanon. And somehow, despite the turbulence, there is this beauty that was there. And that included, uh, uh, you know, in terms of Arab cities, a sense of cultural freedom, freedom of expression, concerts, uh, 
you know, poetry, literature, it's just really, it, despite everything that flourished, and I'm sorry to show you the next picture, but this within 24 hours, August 4th, I woke up in America to this to these images, and I just I was thinking this is a science fiction film or something. Unfortunately, it was true. As you can see, two explosions occurred at the port in Marfa in Beirut, and uh, very powerful. Uh, there, you know, I've been hearing the term Beirut Shima uh, in reference to Hiroshima. At least two hundred deaths, 6,000 injuries, 10 to $15 billion in property damage, 30, through over 300,000 people homeless, still counting. They're still every day discovering. They used, were discovering survivors. Now they're just discovering um, victims. Some of these pictures to the left, you'll be able to see before and after. So it's the same exact uh, location before and then after, before and then after. So how can a whole city be reduced to rubbles in a few seconds, in less than a minute? That is the, the sad reality of Lebanon. But I guess what we can do after we try to absorb that this has happened is to ask what we can do to help. And at the end of today's presentation, I've got a list of resources that I at least personally investigated and that I trust and that I'll share with you. Also, I've got an amazing young lady here whose name is Katie Johnson, who will be biking for Beirut and representing Stanford. She's gonna be talking about that later uh, today um, uh, towards the end. So I'm going to move on and uh, and try to uh, hear here. I'm the father. You know, I don't know if you know me, but I don't have children yet. When people ask me about children, I say, yeah, my Stanford kids are my children and these musicians. So every musician in this collage, I have had the honor of meeting in Lubnan. And, you, you know, me with my old white beard, a gray beard, I get to Beirut and suddenly I hear that these indie musicians whose music I try to play in the West to, to have Americans listen to indie Arabic music. They are calling me the, they're very nice. They don't call me the grandpa of Arabic music, but they, they called me the ambassador. And so I was really honored. So again, in this picture just shows these beautiful moments, mostly in Lebanon with um, uh, these indie singers. These are the same ones that you saw in the poster. This is a collage of happy moments. And it's just such a joy to see that they were as amazing in person as they were through their music. Uh, today's presentation really is meant to go along with a YouTube playlist that I've created. The link is here. If somebody wants to follow along their phone, the playlist, you can take a picture of the code. And then if you're on a laptop, you could have that there. But really, there's no need. Um, but the link is here. This is being recorded. You could always come back and watch the recording and pause. Or just simply go to YouTube and look for my channel, Ramsey Salty. And under that, you'll find this public playlist, which I've called Lebanese music from, from Fairuz to Mashrua Layla. So, so we have to begin with the one and only Fairuz. And, uh, and, and this is a very old song. So maybe if I didn't tell you that, you would think that she's talking about Beirut now. You would think she's talking about Beirut in the aftermath of this horrible explosion. But the song is really old and yet it's still applicable today. Uh, it's called Ya Hawa Beirut. Um, and uh, for those who speak Arabic, or even if you don't, just listen to the lyrics and then I'll do a quick translation. I'm only gonna do one short paragraph. So, Sakkaru Shawara, Atta Musharat, Zara'ul دافع حجر الساحات وينك يا حبيبي بعدك يا حبيبي سرنا الحب الصارخ سرنا المسافات translated they closed off the streets they turned off the signals they planted cannons haunting squares and spaces where are you my love my love is Beirut, I think. After you, my love, our love is crying out in despair with unbearable distances between us. Fairuz sang this, and I think if you hear it and think of the um, 
current situation. It's just an ode to Lebanon that is keeps going. It keeps re, it gets destroyed and it gets rebuilt. Here, let's just listen to a very short part from this. <laughs> Yeah, so a very old video and song of Feirouz uh, singing Yahawa Beirut. Look at the last paragraph. Oh, love of Beirut. Oh, love for the beautiful days. Come back, Beirut, and our memories will return. It can be applied today. So also to show you how important Feirouz has been for the new generation. I mean, this is a relatively young singer from Lebanon who's got a beautiful voice. She just has a guitar. Her name is Talia Lahoud. And one of the things she did, this is so prophetic, guys. She took Feirouz's song, a different one than the one we just heard, called Li Beirut, to Beirut. And if you look at the video, she's actually saying, I dedicate this song to my country, Lebanon, with all the disasters that are happening. But this was recorded like before the current disaster, yet you would think that this young lady knew what was coming because the video now just gained a whole new momentum. It's a song originally by Feirouz, which she's going to sing. I'll leave it without too much commentary. Uh, it's in English and in Arabic. So very emotional to hear Feirouz's song being sung by a new generation. And did you did you hear like in the beginning where she put, you know, this is for my Lebanon, etc. Just so applicable to today. The reference there to the rock that looks like an old sailor's face is of course a Raushi. If you if you know Lebanon, you know that off the coast of uh, Lebanon, right there in the Mediterranean, there are two rocks that come out almost majestically from the ocean from the sea. And, uh, and that's what she's referring to. But look at the last line. Wow, if that doesn't apply to now, I don't know what does. Basically, she's saying, how has Be Beirut's taste suddenly become that of fire and of smoke? And of course, those are the images we're getting today. So again, very prophetic that she would choose this song and sing it for, in the voice of a new generation. Uh, her name again, Talia Lahoud. You can check her out at your leisure. Moving on to Yasmin Hamdan, who I spoke about briefly in the beginning, and I was proud to host at Stanford a few years ago. This, she is such an amazing musician and very gutsy. She actually lives between Lebanon and between uh, France right now <clears throat> and uh, she, she you know this video here I'm not gonna play but it's on the playlist it's called Beirut I love the song because it kind of doesn't necessarily glorify Beirut but points to the paradoxes of Beirut you know Beirut is uh, you know partying till 3 a.m. but it's also not having enough to eat it's you know it's all these contradictions so that song for Beirut is a, a pretty powerful video that you can and watch on your own. Uh, but the one I did want to play today is called Balad. And if you speak Arabic, you know Arab Balad is country and she's talking about uh, uh, Lebanon. Let me try the Lebanese and the translation into English before we go to the uh, 
most powerful video I, I think has ever been made for Lebanon uh, coming up in the next slide. So here we go. Bilibnini. Wada al Balad al Izni, Isha'at and Saitara, Killu Hawajis Harbu Fitni, Killu Bizah, Killu Mohbit. So basically, here's what she's saying. Again, remember, this is before the uh, current events. The situation in my country is making me uneasy. Rumors everywhere. They talk of wars, strife, and division. It feels absurd, all this pain. My leaders are trying to play the role of my friends, yet I struggle every day. So basically, talking about a different kind of Lebanon than the one we see in touristic brochures, but all while also celebrating, I think, um, uh, a better Lebanon. So watch this video clip as, on your own. I'm only going to play a short part. It does have English subtitles. Um, it's been directed by uh, a Academy Award nominated director Elias Lehman, if you know him. And uh, and so it's like you're gonna see Beirut and you're gonna see the 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 crowded streets and the honking and all this, but there's a, like a melancholic feeling to it. Um I, I won't say too much, let's just watch it and see what you guys think. <laughs> powerful imagery uh, of, of Beirut. And at some point in this video, I wish we had more time. She uh, pretends to take over the airwaves, goes into a, a TV studio, kicks out the announcer, takes over. It's like the people are, they are reclaiming their power. Again, this was all before the current events. So these kind of songs now uh, have, uh, have a new life. I'm going to move to Mashru Layla. And yes, they are controversial. And yes, we could talk about them for a long time. But um, I don't want to emphasize any other aspect from Mashru Layla today, except this song where they talk about their country, their nation, which the song is called Lil Watan. If you read Arabic, hashtag Lil Watan is on the slide. Watan means nation or homeland. And so, again, a very powerful song from their album, Asuk, called Lil Watan. Let me try two lines for you. Um, so, uh, ونحنا من نسيم منطير وبنرتد على التدمير وبس تتجرأ بسؤال عن تدهور الأحوال بسكتوك بشعارات عن كل الأم وأمارات. So basically, this is saying uh, we, the youth of Lebanon, uh, yeah, when we dare to speak or ask a question about the disasters around us, they shut you up with uh, emblems and signs and anthems about so-called conspiracies. They may Make you feel like you're betraying your country if you dare to criticize it or criticize the powers that be. So imagine this song, Lil Watan, was very controversial when they released it on their album, uh, Asuk. But in terms of what's happening today and the Lebanese government actually resigning and, and people finally have had enough and they're in the streets and they, despite Corona and despite the explosion, they're, they're in there. You kind of see how Mashru Layla, in a way, are are the voice of this new generation here just so you can hear how they sound this video has the song we just heard Lil Watan with Arabic subtitles <laughs> An official video for this also that you can watch. I just didn't feel it was very appropriate because of the melancholic feeling where I think we're all feeling right now. But he's he, they brought in an actual Arab 
belly dancer to, to dance in the video. It's not done in a way to objectify women. It's done actually to critique how, you know, in a, in a culture where dead, this kind of dancing and casinos exists in Beirut, et cetera, people get so sort of lost in that that they don't keep track of what's going on around them until often it's too late. So the, the video does exist um, online and, uh, and uh, you can watch it. What we just watched was Mashroor Layla singing it live in concert. I'm going to move on to Tanya Saleh, the one I mentioned in the beginning. This is one of her most beautiful videos. It's called Shababik Beirut, Beirut Windows. And, uh, and it's just, uh, I'm not going to play it now because of the time, uh, but uh, do watch it. It's on the playlist and it's got this beautiful, um, images, beautifully shot video of uh, Beirut uh, through its citizens, but it's a very peaceful meditative video. The one that I did want to play by Tanya Saleh is actually this one. And look at the name of this song. Look at the title, guys. It's called A Quarrel with Allah. Uh, so when you when you hear uh, the title, I think a lot of people will be will think, well, you know, whoever wrote these uh, this poem uh, must be, uh, you know, uh, doesn't believe in God. Um, uh, so it's actually, I think, uh, not as radical as the title implies. It's actually written by a poet or a writer whose name is Yunus Ibn. Tanya Saleh took his voice, speaking about Lebanon. She began the song with a mawal or an introduction called Lebanon, A Piece of Sky, Lebnania et Ad Sama, which was composed by Wadi Asafi and which was the poetry of Yunus al -Ibn. So, um, uh, you know, it's, it, it's playful in a way. I mean, it's acknowledging at, uh, the presence of Allah or God by having a dialogue with him because he believes in him. But it's also playful. It's, uh, let, let's see if you, you can... Um, read just a few um, uh, lines here باللبناني يومي بركع وبصلي ولما بصلي صوتي بعلي حتى طلع لي الله نار ونور تجلى وقال لي جينا تفضل شو مطليبك قلت له نحن محاسيبك شايف شو كنا وشو صرنا وشو كتير علينا تجريبك تجريبك so basically in English you know he's saying I pray every day and when I pray I pray out loud till God once visited me, light and fire, he appeared and said to me, here I am, what are your demands? I told him, we are your servants. Did you see what we have become because of your tests? So God replies and says, son, Lebanon is tiring me. It falls into sin and says, Allah is testing me. I created the universe in no time, but you, the Lebanizoids, create 10 or 12 different gods. And when you fell, you came back confusing me and yourselves. Such a powerful poem. And this also refers, I think, to the fact that there are so many religions in Lebanon that then get to have to be represented in the government. And that, although initially I think was conceived to represent everybody, ends up robbing the Lebanese citizen of the right to vote for the best person for the job becomes um, about religion. You want to hear the beginning? Uh, it says, Lebanon, ya itat sama. Lebanon, a piece of sky, uh, remixed by Tanya Saleh, and you'll hear the actual poet. And, 
And so it goes on with the whole, uh, you hear Tanya Sola's vocals accompanying the poet as he's having a dialogue with God. And it's part of Tanya Sola's new album. It's called Takato or Intersection. At her in 2018, boy, she was so gracious and so talented. She was also, by the way, trained by Feiruz's son, uh, Ziad al Rahbani. I'm going to move on to Zayd Hamdan, who you can see in the graphic, uh, wearing his uh, signature dark glasses. And uh, Zayd Hamdan is a very courageous musician, producer, singer from Lebanon. But as you can see, he was arrested a few, in 2011 for singing against the government. But the video that he did was called General Suleiman. And it's a very playful video. You look at it, it looks like a joyful video with Lebanese citizens of all colors and creeds and whatever singing about this fictional General Suleiman. But of course, I think we all know, Zaid, forgive me if I'm giving it away, but uh, I don't know, he's not here, but if he watches this, uh, you know, the video was potent because it made fun of General Suleiman. And of course, some people in the Lebanese governments did not enjoy the slander in the video where he says, General, go home, go home. Well, the Lebanese government has just resides. I think they went home. Uh, he predicted this in a way. I'm going to play the video, although it's a little bit weird in these circumstances. It looks happy and jolly and people think about General Suleiman, but don't just look at the graph, look at the message. It's it's pretty gutsy and he was jailed because of this song by the government and uh, then he was later released. So that's Zaid Hamdan, the, who, who did this song, who did Time Haram, for singing this. But look, look how prophetic that was. And I think you saw images of people dancing in front of the very spots that have now been blown up. Uh, so maybe Zaid was right to criticize the government at the time. And I think he almost wears his time uh, in detention or when he was arrested uh, in terms of a badge of honor. It's another song by Zaid Hamdan called Mohit. It's almost like watching a documentary with his music. I'm not going to play it today, but uh, it's on the playlist and it's, it should win like best cinematography for this song called Mohit. Mohit means ocean. I'm going to move on to Zaid Hamdan, who you can see in the graphic, uh, wearing his uh, signature dark glasses. And uh, Zaid Hamdan is a very courageous musician, producer, singer from Lebanon. But as you can see, he was arrested uh, a few, in 2011 for singing against the government. But the video that he did was called General Suleiman. And it's a very playful video. You look at it, it looks like a joyful video with Lebanese citizens of all colors and creeds and whatever singing about this fictional General Suleiman. But of course, I think we all know, Zaid, forgive me if I'm giving it away, but uh, I don't know, he's not here, but if he watches this, uh, you know, the video was potent because it made fun of General Suleiman. And of course, some people in the Lebanese governments did not enjoy the slander in the video where he says, General, go home, go home. Well, the Lebanese government has just resides. I think they went home. Uh, he predicted this in a way. I'm going to play the video, although it's a little bit weird in these circumstances. It looks happy and jolly and people think about General Suleiman. But don't just look at the graph, look at the message. It's pretty gutsy. And he was jailed because of this song by the government. And uh, then he was later released.
so that's Zaid Hamdan, the, who, who did the song, who did time Haram, for singing this, but look, look how prophetic that was. And I think you saw images of people dancing in front of the very spots that have now been blown up. Uh, so maybe Zaid was right to criticize the government at the time. And I think he almost wears his time uh, in detention or when he was arrested uh, in terms of a badge of honor. Another song by Zaid Hamdan, and called Muhit. It's almost like watching a documentary with his music. I'm not going to play it today, but uh, it's on the playlist and it's, it should win like best for cinematography for this song called Muhit. Muhit means ocean. Um, so I'm going to move now to an amazing singer whose name is Mike Massey, who, uh, who again, I discovered many years ago, who came to uh, Stanford, I think Thuraya Bumadi, Professor Thuraya Abu Mahdi, who's with us today, uh, hadn't realized how amazing he was in concert till she attended his concert in Stanford and told me, God, this, this kid, he writes his own music, he art, writes for other musicians. Um, many of his songs are usually about love and poetry, they're really beautiful. But this song called Bedidria was kind of like a departure. And again, I think it's prophetic. L look at the lines uh, that uh, he uses in the song. He says, <laughs> So look at, look at the lyrics in English. I am disgusted with the news fed up with their lies, meaning the government, night and day. I want to free myself of destruction, of the environment, of all obligation and choices. He wants to lose himself. He wants to leave Beirut, but he can't because he's so attached. But look at those lyrics. I've been mean, talking about destruction and disgust, you know, the disgust with the government and the news, the lies. I mean, all of that seems to me to be like the soundtrack to what is happening in Lebanon today. Um, I'm gonna play just a short part of the video um, where you can see Mike, and it does have English uh, subtitles, I think. منها الفرق وهالتجميع الكوكب بدو تشريح بدي ضيع من الأديان من الأحكام من التلميع من التجريح بدي من التفتيش من التشريح من هالنشل وهالتشبيح بدي ضيع عشق أو خف ليل نهار بالحلال أو بالحرام بدي سافر بدي ضيع واللي بده يصير يصير بدي ضيع Pretty powerful video shot in Beirut, and and I don't know. Don't ask me how he's sitting on a bus on a Beirut expressway without falling. We're gonna have to ask. Uh, uh, Mike about that. Uh, anyway, that was Mike Massey. This, um, okay, I'm going to move to Tanya Qassis. Tanya Qassis, unlike Tanya Saleh, yes, there are many Tanyas in this presentation. Tanya Qassis is called in uh, French, uh, La Soprano du Liban. She's got the soprano voice. She always sings about Lebanon. She rose to fame by sort of singing a song where she combines the Ave Maria, which is Christian, with the Shahada, the Muslim Shahada. Uh, and, and, and she called it, uh, well, that, that mixture really um, catapulted her into fame. But the song that I thought I'd play today is called Unshudat Beirut. And it's again, uh, an old song she released on her very first album as an ode to Beirut, but look at the beginning. This is uh, a quote that you'll hear in the song, and it's about Beirut. So she, in this quote, is Beirut. Let her be courtesan, scholar, or saint, a peninsula of din, of color, and of gold. Beirut has died a thousand times and been reborn a thousand times. And then she begins the song with the Arabic, Anti, uh, Anti, Ya Beirut, Ard al Hiwar, Kunti, Ubadik, Inti, Wahdik, Ya Beirut. Uh, so uh, I'm going to play just the beginning for you so you can hear her gorgeous voice. Again, 
this line about Beirut dying a thousand times and being reborn a thousand times. I guess now it's a thousand and one. Let her be courtesan, scholar or saint. A peninsula of tin, of color and of gold. Beirut has died a thousand times. And be reborn. If it got fixed, great. If not, what she said was Enti Enti Ya Beirut Ard Al Hiwar, which means you are Beirut, the land of dialogue. And that is, of course, always the hope that we, from tragedy, maybe something better will come. The price is really high. Um, I'm going to move on to, or uh, I'm about to end here with two uh, musicians that will be very different from what we heard. And that is a passion of mine, although I am a 54 year old man, uh, I still like hip hop, or I discovered hip hop in my 50s, and Arabic hip hop in particular specifically because Arab hip hop artists are addressing issues that have to do with corruption and liberty and social justice in a way that is so powerful. It's like poetry being reborn with a new language. And this group called Fariq El Atras, Fariq El Atras, uh, sings Lebanese rap like you've never heard. Even the song is called Corruption. I mean, you know, they were critiquing the government way before the current tragedy. Um, for those of you who are my age, you do know that they're playing with the word Farid al Atras, who of course was a big musician um, back in my day. But this is not Farid, they changed the D to a Q. This is Farid al Atras, so they're the Atras group, and Atras actually means deaf. So it's like the deaf group. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm just going to let you hear a little bit of Arabic hip hop. Uh, let me know. What you think this is live? Uh, if you speak Lebanese or Arabic, the lyrics are powerful. I can't see me. I'm not doing it from the past. Life is big, gummy. I'm not going to get hurt. The fish in the sea was not eel. The mizan was dead. The guests are in the sea. The bedlet. All the connections. I don't have time to talk. 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 I don't have so I don't know, even if you speak Arabic, it's so Lebanese, the, the dialect that you may not get it, but he was talking about the dollar and the devaluation of the dollar, because you know, in Lebanon, with, with everything going on, they were using the dollar to try to, you know, which, which is not good for the economy, but then the devaluation of the dollar, suddenly now people can pull money out of their uh, bank accounts. There are all these uh, complications. And of course, you'd need to speak to an economist about those repercussions. But again, they are so daring. And Arabic hip hop ended up being more powerful than like say ballots in terms of the liberties they take in critiquing the system. Uh, so, I'm going to end with an Arab American artist. Her name is Naima Shalhoub. Naima Shalhoub is Arab American. She has always, uh, she lives in Oakland, California, and she's always been a voice for um, Arab Americans um, who are uh, feeling sort of disconnected from the Middle East, but at the same time seeking a connection. She sings in English, she sings in Arabic, and her new album is called Sifir. Sefer means zero in Arabic. And this came out before the uh, explosions in Beirut. I think a 
month before. But again, it's very prophetic. It's uh, half English, half Arabic, and she shot it in the desert. She filmed it in the desert. I'm just going to play a little clip for Naima, who's always doing so much for other people. She went to Lubnan and, I, and uh, recorded this album uh, between there and Oakland. And when she released it last week, she donated the proceeds to Beirut. Yeah, so do watch the video and uh, check out her album, Sifr, if you can. Uh, she, she doesn't uh, disappoint. And it's like, what, that was Arabic blues, I think? I have never heard a mixture between blues and Arabic. So I am back and uh, I'm looking at the chat. Uh, so uh, a Jordanian American artist, Ridiculous, I guess is here, Marhaba. He says he loves Farid. I think he means Farid Al-Atrash. Uh, if you want to type anything in the chat, I can now see it. Um, otherwise, if you want to ask questions, we can do that. Uh, and also I want to bring in Katie uh, Johnson to talk about what she uh, is doing for uh, Beirut. Um, I'm looking at all your beautiful faces, especially if you are in uh, the Middle East, in uh, Jordan, let's say. Uh, these, these people joined us on a Thursday night, like my brother, uh, who is uh, apparently, he's probably eating hummus. What is that? I don't know if you guys can see Ziad Salti with the last name, sitting next to um, uh, um, my adopted sister. Oh, there's the wife. There's the wifey. This is my amazing sister-in-law, Huda. And uh, oh, there's my good friend and little brother, Michael. Marhaba, Michael. And Batul. Shuftek Batul. So why is it a big deal that they're joining us from Jordan? Because it's Thursday. Thursday night and Thursday night in Jordan with Friday being the holiday is the night for people to, you know, relax and, and not, not attend lectures, I guess. Uh, so thank you for joining us, those in Lubnan, in, uh, in Jordan. But uh, there's another Katie, Katie, who's in the room and her name is Katie Johnson. And Katie Johnson is biking for Beirut. Can you tell us about what you as a Stanford student have decided to do in order to help Beirut, uh, Katie? Okay, great. Salmi alina bil Arabia. And guys, think of any questions. So so hi everyone, I'm Katie Johnson, a current Stanford student. I, along with three other students, are organizing a fundraiser for Lebanon. The four of us lived in Lebanon this past fall and were devastated to see the impact of the explosion. I grew up in Jordan when I was a teenager and Aidan Salomon, another organizer on this call, attended Sijal himself. We were also both students of Ustaz Ramzi. We have been so blessed to live and spend time in the Middle East and to have received the generosity of the Arab people. So in early September, we're biking the equivalent of up and down the Lebanese coast. And we're doing this to raise money for three phenomenal life-saving organizations working in Lebanon right now. So I'm gonna pass it over to Aiden, who's on the Zoom to share more about the organizations we're working for and the fundraiser. Hi everyone, uh, shukran Ya Ramzi, wa uh, shukran Katie uh, uh, for putting on this uh, talk, the other Katie, not you Katie Johnson. Um, I actually, yeah, I, I was a student of Ramsey. I was a student of Professor Tharaya. I actually, I went to Sijal. Um, all, uh, uh, Katie is also a phenomenal teacher and runs a phenomenal institute. Uh, we're raising money for the Lebanese Red Cross, uh, Beitna Beitik and Egna Legna uh, Besedet. Um, I don't want to spend uh, too much money and take away from a uh, potential Q&A, um, but uh, I mean, the Lebanese Red Cross is an organization that provides 
the bulk of EMT, emergency medical assistance uh, and ambulance uh, services in Beirut. Uh, Beitna Beitek is an organization run uh, by young people, mostly in their 20s, um, that was started in the wake of COVID-19 to provide uh, housing assistance for medical professionals uh, in, uh, in Lebanon. And now they've sort of shifted to providing housing for the you know, tens of thousands of displaced by the explosion. Uh, Egna Legna Besedet is, a, uh, is an organization that was started uh, by Ethiopian women and was uh, mainly directed at providing uh, all sorts of assistance for domestic workers in Lebanon. And now it is uh, specifically aimed towards domestic workers that have been, helped, uh, been um, affected by the explosion. Um, I, uh, I can share, um, oh, thank you. Ramsey uh, is sharing the screen of the GoFundMe that we've set up for Viking for Beirut. Um, we can put the link uh, in the chat uh, as well, if anyone uh, would like to donate. Uh, those, uh, those are the organizations that we felt really passionate about and wanted to uh, benefit. Those are not by any means exclusive to all the uh, organizations that are doing amazing work in Beirut right now. Uh, there's also the Lebanese Food Bank. There's, if you go, I know the Guardian, the New York Times, Washington Post have all posted articles about organizations you could help in, in, um, uh, in Beirut. Uh, please feel free to do your research, donate to whatever ones that you feel very passionate about. But uh, if you have money to spare, we would also help all the assist. Uh, we would very much appreciate all the assistance you could give uh, in helping us reach our goal for those organizations. Shukran, Aiden. And also, if anybody wants to email me, um, you know, you, I think everybody has my email. I'll type it anyway. I can send you a list of NGOs and other organizations. You kind of want to be careful about not donating blindly to Lebanon right now because you, we've seen what the government <laughs> was doing with, uh, sure. you know, money there. So um, the Red Cross is absolutely a wise decision, Aiden and Katie. Thank you for biking for Beirut. And I should mention that um, uh, there are there are, there are a couple of uh, um, there there are a couple of organizations that uh, are on the ground as we speak. Um, I think. Uh, oh, all right. Well, uh, uh, please email me because I, I would like to be able to talk. Can you see my screen right now, guys? Yes, we can. You can you see biking for Beirut? Indeed. Oh, good. All right. So uh, the, this is Tamir Ahmar's uh, uh, Instagram page. Can you see that, Katie? Yeah. Okay, good. so he's he is. Uh, there's a link on his uh, Insta page, and there you can, um, uh, you know, uh, buy his art, and everything's being donated to uh, Lubnan. This is another reputable organization in Amman, and basically they will be uh, hosting in Amman. If you're in Amman, go down. Uh, it's like an exhibition that's going to be taking place in Amman on the 22nd of August, where you, there's going to be art by local Jordanian artists. You can go buy the art and the Jordanian artists have uh, decided to give the uh, proceeds to Lubnan. Uh, Habibi Funk is an amazing uh, record. It was not really a label, but they're, they produce music. They have this new uh, CD, or uh, well, there's no more CDs. Solidarity with Beirut, a compilation where everything goes to help Lubnan. Uh, this young lady, whose name is Karim Kanj, I've been in touch with, she is donating by working with something called Renovate Beirut. Again, that is there if you want to go to the GoFundMe. Um, uh, I mean, I, I like some of these here, like Habibi Funk, because by doing that, Farah, you're actually helping the indie artist music scene. Here's the Lebanese Red Cross. And finally, and I would be careful with going to every single Stand with Beirut funding, uh, you know, project, definitely double check with me or with somebody who would know before you donate. But these are all, they have just popped up in the last week. So there are a lot of ways to help. Um, in my case, I'm trying to help the Lebanese artists uh, and musicians. Uh, what can I do for the cultural scene? Because uh, other people hopefully are doing a lot for the rebuilding the Red Cross. It was interesting to see the progression from Feirouz to, to modern artists like uh, like Yasmin Hamdan. Um, I actually, I've listened to Yasmin Hamdan before, so it was cool to see her brought up. Um, I think I, I haven't listened to much Arab hip hop, so I guess 
if I do have a question, it would be about like what the Arab scene, Arab hip hop scene is like in uh, in Lebanon and Jordan. Um, oh wow. about it. So, so can I, can I, uh, how do you say, can I do a shameless plug, Hamza? Uh, Arabolo- Ara- what is it? Soundcloud.com slash Arabology. Over 100 podcasts available for free. Half of them are about Arabic hip hop. So just click and listen to this old man take you on a hip hop journey through the Arab world. And so, you know, I've got, you know, the way hip hop is functioning right now in the, in the Arabic music scene is uh, is amazing. Thank you, Sijal, for saying it's not a shameless plug, but it kind of is. Um, and of course, uh, Hamza, thank you, Habibi, for speaking. But you don't have to ask a question. I would love to just hear uh, what you thought. Like, was there a particular singer you heard today that moved you a little bit or that made you curious enough to want to investigate uh, further, uh, or, or if you have any questions, we can discuss uh, together. Oh, Abir, Abir, Shukran, Abir, Yalla ya Abir, and the question Abir in English, in French, in Arabic. Um, first, Mr. Khair, Doctor, Shukran, Shukran, Kter, Kter. Um, okay. I think my English is a little bit rusty, but I will give it a try just to um, to be understood by everyone. Um, actually, I, I told my student that I have all the time the intention to attend your classes and to come to um, since last summer until now. And that's Finally, I came. <laughs> yeah, hello, um, sahla, ahla, ahla, ahla. <laughs> So um, that's like um, a question that I always have um, whenever it comes to this kind of music. I'm like in my late twenties, but I still feel that um, I did not that much in, enjoy the the kind of um, I don't know the 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 noise, maybe the kind of a musical instruments that they are using. For me, it feels like it's more Western that, than Arabic. Um, I, I don't know what, if there is any relationship with the, the idea that this kind of a music started from the West. So, um, and, and did you feel like, um, um, it's it support our kind of, of of culture of art or it's just give us um, a new an identity that it's not all the time um, related to this yeah. area yeah that's such a good question because I mean the, I think that's how you define indie and alternative Arabic music because mm-hmm. it's different from the music that we're used to that we grew up with I mean, I am Mr. Fairuz. I get home, it's Fairuz, it's Um Kulthum, it's Abdel Wahab. I'll even put Nancy Azram, Amr Diab. But there, even if when you look at Amr Diab and Nancy Azram, already you started seeing a fusion, right, between Egyptian music. And so in the 80s, when that happened, people would say, Shuha da Amr Diab. Uh, this is not Arabi. He's bringing salsa and flamenco, you know, Habibi and Uradayin. Now it's more acceptable as like he did borrow from that, but he kept it Egyptian. He kept the lyrics about, you know, love the way we see it in the Arab world or, uh, you know, heartache or whatever, Egypt in his songs. So yes, I mean, uh, the commercial market tends to, st- to shy away from these kind of mixes, but that doesn't mean that, the, that we ca- they can't coexist with another market that is defined by the mixing. But what I hate, Javier, is when Arab artists like take an, a Western song and translate it into Arabi and and like redistribute it. You know, I don't know if you know that song, I Will Survive. You know, I don't know if you guys know it from the disco icon. I mean, you know, you had, I think, Haifa Wahbi take that song and change the words. And it was disgusting. It was awful because, I mean, it was just a, 
they were imitating the West. She took the song, she changed the lyrics, and she kept the same disco beat. It was in Arabic. That to me is not indie music. That is, you know, that is just copying the West. What I love about these musicians, you notice, first of all, they sing in Arabic. Yani, they create their own lyrics that are powerful. Secondly, they borrow from other marginalized groups in the West. I mean, hip hop originated in the streets of New York by the African American community who were talking against violence and the police. So when you hear Palestinians sing hip hop in Arabic about their situation, you go, wow, they're not just copying. They're, they're borrowing that and then making it apply to them. And then you'll hear a beautiful mixture, Abir, of, you know, the Oud and Tabli, yes, with electronic synthesizers. Hip hop may be the most foreign to us because it's still a Marvin, but even that I think is becoming uh, quite Arab in its uh, nature. But I think some of the ballads we heard by uh, Mike Massey, because uh, yes, it has a Western uh, touch, but again, he's got he's got all the you know the kaman, the oud, the tabla, all of them are Yeah, they've added a new dimension, and I'm not saying this is better than that, but I'm with you, Abir, when we talk about imitating blindly the West. You know, it, I'm going to dress this way, and I'm going to because Britney Spears, or I think I'm old because Beyonce, whatever. Um, so yeah, there's a difference I think, between imitating and borrowing and making it apply to you and adding to it. Ramzi, can I add something about yes. this? Yes, on, Dr. La Thuraya. <laughs> and about the interaction uh, between the classical music European and the the Arabic and uh, everybody knows our musiqar and Muhammad Abdul Wahab like from the 30s he started يعني, if you know the 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 all the music and the beautiful songs of Muhammad Abdul Wahab or Farid Al Atrash uh, they are like introduction or even in some composition there is this interaction and the uh, borrow for music classical or or tango or uh, vals like Layali uh, Al-Uns Vienna, Mathalan. And it's beautiful and it's it's uh, for me it doesn't take anything from the our Arabic culture. And as languages, as art, we have to be open to uh, like uh, this, um, the, the, the modernity and th this interaction, which she is the interaction uh, for me, it's enrichment, but not taking anything from our culture. And I think Abir is right in terms of like they could coexist. Like you don't have to choose. Absolutely. You know, it depends Absolutely. on your mood. I know Aiden saw uh, S sometimes. You know, is in a Feiruz mode, so he'll put on his abaya, and and I don't know if you're doing shisha, you shouldn't. But anyway, and then you can find him hip hopping in the streets of Beirut the next day. So it depends on the mood. Uh, thank you, Suraya Anjad. Uh, even Feiruz, I think you talked about Abdel Wahab. I know the tango and all that. Absolutely. But uh, I think even Feiruz initially when she was, they were saying, she's Western, how dare she sing in four minutes when songs by Uncle Thum were like 50 minutes long. And then the West end, ends up adopting Fairuz. Like I think she, the Rahmani is actually affected Western music back. Um, very good to comment, Abir, shukran. Anybody else? Oh, oh, somebody typed, uh, oh, Farah. Exactly, from Farah. So she says, Salam, Dr. Ramzi. I love this survey of revolutionary Lebanese music and thank you. I have a question about the political repercussions for creative collaborators with gutsy singers like those of Mashur Alayla and others. For example, music video director Shadi uh, Habash recently died in Egyptian prison for his involvement with Rami Issam's critical lyrics of a CC. I suppose my question is, what is our responsibility as creatives and audiences to protect these revolutionary artists and where does our agency lay? Yeah, I mean, uh, Farah is referring, I think, to Egypt and what's going on right now under the CC regime. And I don't want to turn this into a political, uh, you know, discussion. But I think a lot of people are very disappointed in the way the Arab Spring has turned out in Egypt. I mean, you do know, no matter where you are on the political spectrum, that people are being imprisoned in Egypt right now based on their political um, uh, points of view. And 
so the singer that Farah is mentioning here, Shadi Habash, I mean, he wasn't even necessarily, I mean, he, he is a revolutionary singer, but he was friends with Rami Isam, who was one of those Egyptian singers who would go into Midan at Tahrir with his guitar and sing for freedom, you know, and then he would get arrested and he would get tortured and he would leave the jail a few days later with bruises, go back to the Midan and sing. So Rami Isam, of course, his life became so endangered under Sisi that he left and got political asylum, I think, in Sweden. But what happened is the Egyptian government arrested his friends just because they were his friends and, and or had an association with him. One of them was Shadi Habash, who sadly, and a young man with so much promise and talent who ended up dying in jail at a young age, gone, because he endorsed it. So I think that's what she's saying. And so the question about, you know, what we can do, I mean, if you are in Egypt or in that, you have to be very careful because you're seeing how activists are being, you know, um, set up and being arrested and all this, you know, the group Mashru Layla is banned in Egypt. Uh, you don't have to agree with these groups, I think, but we need to agree with the fact that they have a right to express themselves, even if we hate their opinion, you know, and that it's not necessarily Western if it's different. It just might be a new way to see uh, the Arab world. Um, so I think our responsibility, I mean, what I try to do is, is play that revolution music, take advantage of the fact that at Stanford, we've got a radio station called KZSU that has no commercials, so basically they can't censor me. And so I take advantage of the show to play Arabic music that would be banned in the Arab world. And I love it when they, they you know, they've got VPNs, they've got ways around censorship in the Arab world. I love getting um, emails from uh, people like, let's say, in Egypt saying, thank you for playing that song which banned in Egypt, but we heard you through the internet and you gave us, I don't know, a dose of, uh, um, I don't know, a much needed dose of um, optimism. So yeah, I mean, I think we should listen to these indie artists and I think we should um, uh, encourage them and support them, especially when they're under fire, you know, write letters, maybe if America puts some pressure on them, uh, you know, on, on the Egyptian government, maybe they will release some of these amazing young people who are in jail just for writing a poem or just for singing a song against the government. Scary. Anybody else want to say anything? Farah, we can see you now. Shukran al -sual. Yeah, shukran, doctor. I guess um, I didn't want to, you know, um, I, I certainly don't want to make it about politics, but given that a lot of these, uh, you know, Lebanese artists are um, confronting corruption and confronting the government, I just wondered if there's anything we can do as their consumers and fans to protect them from the same fate as the persecution that other artists faced in Egypt. You just did it, Farah. You know, you, you brought it up in a public forum. And when I say I don't want it to be political, I mean, of course, every song I think I played today was political. I mean, there's, there's no, I'm not <laughs> pretending it's not, but I'm just saying I want to keep sort of emphasizing the music today because you can go, thankfully, to so many uh, online lectures this week alone to hear the political analysis of what's going on in Lebanon. And there again, I don't want to claim this tie to Lebanon as someone who left Lebanon in my teens. You know, I don't feel I have the right to talk about the pain right now. I'm seeing it as an Arab American, as someone who lives in the West now. And I, that's why I don't want, and I don't feel qualified to actually answer questions about parliament and, and things like that in Lubnan. I probably know as much as the average guy here. Um, in terms of what really is, is going on, you need to ask somebody who's there, who's seeing it, who's on the grounds now. And okay, so are there any last uh, comments? Thank you, Sijal, for um, for uh, the for for putting a list, there'll be a recording of this that we'll put online, and you, so you could always go back and pause and look at some of the um, uh, slides I played quickly. Um, okay, and uh, we have another chat yeah. in here as well. Oh, let's, let's hear that. Yes, Katie, from Yes, 
So another a wonderful question here. Sorry, my Wi-Fi is so poor, so I will type it here. I have read that Mashur Alayla includes lyrics and ideas from Arabic poets, but also American poets like Sylvia Plath and Walt Whitman. We saw in the presentation music and poetry work together. Today in the U.S., I think uh, poetry and music are seen as separate, at least in the mainstream. What is the connection between poetry and music in the indie scene in Lebanon? Do these artists see themselves as part of any poetic traditions or as something new? That's a wonderful question. Thank you, Caleb. Thank you very much, and I'm very glad you brought that up. Arabic poetry, even old Arabic poetry in Fusha, you know, classical Arabic, is still alive and well in the indie music scene. I mean, it's 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 amazing that they would take a poet from like even a pre-Islamic poet who's written in Arabic and put and you know put his poetry to music, um, and it works and it works. So uh, you know the. Um, I have several playlists on YouTube um, that you can look at and, and where I've put, you know, old poetry being brought up to date and how weirdly uh, applicable it is. In terms of Mashru Layla, yes, definitely. There, uh, uh, especially Hamid Sinno, I think. He's, he is such a fan of poetry, of um, uh, especially, I think, poetry that deals with uh, civil rights and human rights and things like that, uh, literature, both in the West and in the East. So it's not, um, it's not weird to hear Mashru Layla talk about Sylvia Plath, like in a song. And you're like, what? You know, they're Lebanese, whatever. But they use it in a way to empower their own people, their own generation. Um, so yeah, and of course, so many of their songs are banned and, and they're banned in so many countries. And I think, you know, that would warrant another discussion, which I would have to do with human rights, or at least the way we see the issue of human rights in the Arab world today. What an amazing comment, shukran. I do not know Callum, but shukran. So we're good, everybody. I hope, uh, alhamdulillah, well, each of you who came here today is imprinted in my memory and is going as part of the healing process. I also see a dear friend, Ahmad, sitting on the balcony, I think, and, and I know how busy he is and he even made it. Fahla sahla, Ahmad. Uh, thank you for the, my old students who came, the new students who came, uh, are, are you're affiliated with Sujal or not, Ahla sahla. Thank you for, I think, you know, just coming and allowing us for an hour to forget about our troubles and to try to remember that if you get really depressed, whether it's Corona, whether it's Lebanon, whether it's the world, whether it's, you know, whatever, try music. It's not going to take it away, but it's going to make it more uh, tolerable. Right, and I think Thuraya Bumahdi, Dr. Thuraya Bumahdi, uh, is uh, an example of you know she, she when I call her stressed out, she says, "Did you probably didn't listen to Abdel Wahab today?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Really?" So I play Abdel Wahab, and lo and behold, I'm feeling better. So yeah, I mean, I think after uh, you know the healing power of music, and I think uh, I'm hoping that today I did justice to these um, young musicians, and hopefully they will rebuild and their, uh, you know, the cultural scene in Beirut will return to what it was, if not better, inshallah. But right now, it's too early to be optimistic. It's too early to move on. I think. All right, everyone. Uh, and Farhan, yes, Asmahan, thank you, Naila, for your comment. Uh, everybody here is like. Asmahan. Asmahan and Jamila. Uh, Asmahan and Jamila. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Shall we, shall we do the countdown? Uh, Katie, we're going to do the countdown from Ashara to Sifir. And at, when you reach Sifir, I'm going to end. O okay, Katie? <laughs> sure. All but right. Yalla. Oh, ah, yalla. Fadal. Right, this is your last chance. Yalla. But before the countdown, I would just like to say thank you so much again. This was, you know, the the most inspiring, I think, talk that we could possibly be having in, in such a difficult time for Lebanon right now. So thank you for always, you know, reminding us of of priorities in life, sharing with us this beautiful music, uh, giving us the opportunity to, to learn from your experience. It was, it was a pleasure to have you with us today. Shukran, Habibti. 
bless you, everyone. Stay okay. strong, everyone. If you feel like lonely, depressed, it's normal. Listen to music, reach out, you know, we're all in the same boat. Inshallah, by this time next year, we'll look back and, and things will be better, inshallah. All right, this is going to test your Arabic uh, counting numbers, Aiden. Fenhui, yalla, ashara, tisa, tamania, saba, sitta, khamsa, Yalla, the Fenhui, arba, Salasa, Islam, Wahid, Masalama, Salam, 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 Salam